very much for the kind introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. And I will be talking about silencing HLA expression to produce low immunogenic tissues, cells and tissues. So the human leukocyte antigen are the most uh, polymorphic genes of the entire human genome. There is more than 12,000 HLA alleles described, and there is a mean of 450 new alleles every year. So according to the structure differences, there are two main classical HLA class 1 and class 2 molecules, and they comprise HLA A, B, and C, and HLA DR, DP, and DQ. These are the most important loci for transplantation. The main function of HLA molecules is to present peptides to immune effector cells that lead to an immune response uh, or not against the target cells. The high variability of HLA is fundamental uh, for, um, for an efficient immune response and allow us to defend virtually against almost all infectious uh, pathogens and cancer cells. However, remains a major role, uh, hurdle in transplantation because the high variability of IG, f due to the high variability of HLA is very difficult to match donors with recipients and therefore allogeneic cells, organs or tissues will be recognized as foreign or and rejected. Um, so far, uh, transplantation has been a successful therapy due to the application of immunosuppressive regimens, but as you know, they have a very severe side effects that also compromise patient life. So the aim of our studies is uh, the generation of cells, tissues, or organs that cannot be rejected or that have um, improved survival after allogeneic transplantation. And for this, we aim to control HLA expression in an allele gene or class-specific way. Uh, this is uh, our hypothesis, and uh, as I explained before, HLA is the basis for the immune response. So we, we hypothesize that when we silence HLA expression, we can prevent the recognition of uh, the foreign tissue by the immune system of the patient. And therefore, we generate a, a condition that we call immunological blindness. We don't have here tolerance because the immune system of the patient could reject uh, the foreigner cells if uh, uh, it could see them. So, how we do, yeah, with this strategy, then we hope to reduce the immunogenicity of cells. And how we do this, we use uh, RNA interference. So, we uh, deliver uh, double strand RNA, short terpene RNA, uh, into the target cells using a lentiviral vector. And uh, the antisense strand of this uh, double strand RNA is complementary to HLA uh, transcripts. And this uh, leads to the degradation of HLA transcripts and therefore to reduction of HLA protein expression in the cell surface. This is one example here. We have used uh, an allogeneic transplantation rat model, and we have silenced MHC class 1 expression in the rat is called RT1A uh, in fibroblasts. So here you have, uh, you see uh, a downregulation of beta-2 microglobulin at a mRNA level that causes a reduction in RT1 expression um, at a protein level. And then we have transplanted uh, these uh, fibroblasts into uh, a fully MHC mismatched manner. And you see here that non-silenced fibroblasts, they were uh, completely rejected by week three after transplantation, but the fibroblasts that had been modified for reduction of MHC expression, they were able to engraft and they were detectable during the entire monitoring time. So this preliminary work was very uh, encouraging to continue further research uh, these uh, studies and uh, of course I work for the Department of Transfusion Medicine so we are interested in the in vitro uh, production of blood cells and today I, I will be talking about the in vitro production of platelets. So platelets are, uh, of course, very important to maintain hemostasis, but they have many other functions. They have important secretory functions, uh, several growth factors. They may modulate the immune responses, and they regulate uh, proliferation. And they have been used uh, for many regenerative applications. Uh, of course, that the classical use of platelets is to treat the thrombocytopenia, uh, but they, they uh, help uh, wound healing, uh, they are involved in tissue remodeling, and they have been, been used as drug carriers in anti-cancer therapies. 
So uh, thrombocytopenia is a condition characterized by a low platelet ma number and uh, this is uh, also a risk for the patients due uh, to a high risk of bleeding. There were several um, strategies uh, established to treat thrombocytopenia, including the administration of uh, uh, TPO receptor agonists or the, um, the application of ex vivo uh, inducing megakaryocyte progenitors. However, these have not been very effective, so the standard therapy is still the transfusion of allogeneic platelets. But, uh, Patients suffering of hematological disorders, they develop very often thrombocytopenia and they require multiple transfusions, multiple platelet transfusions. And therefore, with the time, they develop uh, an immune response against uh, IgLA present on the platelets and they develop a condition known as platelet transfusion refractoriness. That means that after the transfusion, there is no increase in platelet counts because they are uh, very quickly depleted from the circulation due to the presence of IgLA antibodies. Body. So we think that the solution for this problem is uh, uh, the transfusion of IgLA silenced platelets, what we call IgLA universal platelets. And uh, we have, um, we ha and others have uh, established different protocols for the production of platelets in vitro. This is possible using specific cytokine cocktails and uh, it's also possible to monitor uh, this uh, differentiation process due to uh, the subsequent acquisition of specific markers. So in our first studies we have uh, used CD34 hematopoietic progenitor cells and we have uh, transduced them with a lentiviral vector to deliver our sHRNA that target beta 2 microglobulin and silence and cause the silencing of completely IgLA class 1 expression, IgLA A, B and C. And we have differentiated them into megakaryocytes, the precursor of platelets. And one typical feature of uh, megakaryocytes is the increase of uh, cell content. And what you see here is uh, that our uh, megakaryocytes that we have produced in vitro also present uh, these uh, typical features. So you see here polyploid megakaryocytes. This is due to an endomitosis. Uh, and you see here an increase by up to uh, 16N. Uh, also very important is that the silencing effect was not uh, lost due to differentiation. So even after the differentiation from the progenitor cells into megakaryocytes, we uh, have a significant silencing effect for HLA class 1. So we went further with uh, the differentiation of the megakaryocyte and into proplatelets. And proplatelets are these uh, long uh, beard, beard <coughs> structures that you can see here. Here, the lentiviral vector here has GFP as reported gene, so you see them in green. And then uh, the platelets will be shedded from this structure. They also present the typical uh, platelet marker, CD42A, CD61. And what we also observe is that there is no difference between uh, IgLA si the differentiation rates between IgLA silenced uh, megakaryocytes or non-IgLA silenced. So IgLA silenced do not affect the differentiation process. So of course we want to produce functional platelets and we have harvest and the platelets from the differentiated platelets from uh, the cell culture supernatant. We stimulate them with platelet agonists here ADP and you see that they were able to uh, regulate activation markers as you can see here. Of course, we want to generate platelets that escape an immune response, so we have uh, performed uh, some complement-dependent cytotoxic assays. Here we have incubate uh, uh, megakaryocytes and platelets with antibodies uh, specific for the HLA alleles that the progenitor cells were expressing. And what we s you see here is that when uh, we performed the CDC assay with um, um, cells that were derived from non-silenced uh, progenitor cells. You see very high lysing rates, so, um, as you can see here or here. But when we use uh, IgLA silenced uh, megakaryocytes and platelets, you see that they were able to escape complement-mediated cytotoxicity and the lysis scores were significantly lower. Then uh, we have uh, confirmed these um, um, improved survival effect of platelets in uh, a platelet transfusion refractory in mouse model. And we have transfused uh, non-silenced and silenced platelets in animals that were um, 
uh, carrying antibodies against uh, HLI that were expressed, uh, that should be expressed on the cells that we were transfusing. And what you see here in this gate is the platelets that are produced from cells that we transfuse in the mouse. Uh, here in the absence of uh, refractory nice conditions, that means without antibodies, and here in uh, under refractory nice condition in presence of the antibodies. So you see here that when you transfuse and retransfuse here megakaryocytes um, into the, the mouse model, in the absence of platelets, both non-silenced and silenced were able to produce platelets and they were detectable in the mouse circulation, but under refractory nice conditions, uh, the, when we transfuse uh, HLA express and megakaryocytes, uh, we could not detect platelets. However, if we transfuse HLA silenced megakaryocytes, they were still able to form platelets and we could detect them even after eight, day, uh, eight days after uh, transfusion. So you see here a significant difference between these both uh, strategy. Of course, that we use for CD34 uh, hematopoietic progenitor cells that were derived from GCSF mobilized uh, stem cell donors. This is a very limited cell source, so we were looking for unlimited cell sources to allow the um, production, uh, the large scale production of platelets for the future, uh, for the future therapeutic use. So we choose as alternative cell source uh, iPS cells that you have heard already in the, um, in the first talk. And we have, uh, we have generated different cell lines um, using the Yamanaka factors. And we adapt uh, then the cell lines to completely xenofree conditions to facilitate the translation into clinical application in the future. So we have silenced HLA expression in these uh, iPS cell lines and uh, we have then adopted the protocol to the production of platelets from iPS cells. So what you can see in these cells is that we were able to generate HLA silenced, uh, an HLA, HLA silenced IPS cell line and HLA universal IPS cell lines and that the silencing effect was also stable. So you see here that uh, the IPS cells were, were still silenced um, after uh, many passages and they were expressing uh, the pluripotence marker. So HLA silencing effect is not uh, lost and does not affect uh, um, the pluripotency of uh, IPS. So we differentiate them into megakaryocytes and again you see that we were able to generate mega polyploid megakaryocytes you see here and uh, we were able to, I mean these megakaryocytes have the typical um, megakaryocytic uh, or phenotype expressing CD42A, CD41 and we have a peak of differentiation, uh, differentiation by day 19 and then this usually go down. Uh, also these megakaryocytes were silenced for HLA class 1 expression. We continue further with this megakaryocyte differentiation into proplatelets and they were able again to produce very nice proplatelets here that then will then, uh, that will then generate uh, platelets. Uh, we have uh, harvested uh, platelets from the cell culture supernatant again stimulated them with platelet agonists ADP and thrombin and you see that they could ex uh, upregulate platelet activation markers and also uh, they can aggregate that is uh, a typical uh, characteristic of platelets so they were functional. Of course, that we aim to produce uh, therapeutic levels uh, or relevant levels of platelets, and for this we need uh, a bioreactor. So we have developed, or we are in the process of uh, optimizing uh, a bioreactor. Uh, this is uh, the correct stage of, um, of this bioreactor. This is uh, a double chamber. Uh, in the first chamber or in the upper chamber, there are static conditions there, uh, and these two chambers are derived by a porous membrane. So we you can uh, seed the upper chamber with uh, the megakaryocytes that were differentiated from the IPS cells and then they will produce the proplatelets through the porous membrane and the platelets uh, will then be recovered in um, a reservoir. Uh, these uh, conditions here mimic uh, the sinusoidal uh, uh, vessels of the bone marrow uh, regarding shear stress and all conditions. So in real life, the bioreactor looks like this, and uh, these chambers are the cassettes, and we are able to recover platelets already from these uh, systems. 
So I hope that I have shown you that is uh, or the feasibility to produce HLA silence to platelets in vitro that uh, is a combination of the blood farming concept with the capability to modify genetically those cells to develop an optimized cell product. So I thank very much, of course, my group that perform actually this work in the <laughs> or the lab, to all our cooperation partners, to our funding, and to you for your attention. Thank you very much. Oh, we apply for funding. <laughs> uh, I mean, all process, all uh, differentiation process was uh, developed already in, um, in cooperation with the Paul Erwis Institute uh, the in Main Germany. And um, yes, I mean, we would like to go to into clinical or to a pilot trial as soon as possible. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, <laughs> I mean for the future of course, uh, I mean the, this uh, bioreact that we are developing is scalable so you can, uh, um, you can add even more cassettes to increase the, the therapeutic number. What we have uh, per two cassettes, we can develop 10 uh, up to um, 11 platelets, what would be already enough for one transfusion. Yes. And then you produce the megakaryocytes. Yes. So the megakaryocytes are the free platelets to replace them. How much um, amplification do you get? Uh, from the iPS cells. Yes. Um, I mean, that's difficult to say because in the first part, it will, I mean, the differentiation still, uh, it varies from uh, differentiation to differentiation. I mean, we have, uh, um, I mean, uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, where we say that for one uh, um, iPS cell that was already in uh, the differentiation protocol, we can produce a thousand uh, megakaryocytes that then produce a different number of platelets. I mean, I also, uh, for our purposes, we think that in the future, I mean, although we are trying to produce a platelet also for many <laughs> other applications, um, I mean, for transfusion and to treat uh, this particular condition, thrombocytopenia, mm, we aim actually the production of the megakaryocytes because also in our animal model, we have seen that we can irradiate them because it's, that is one advantage of using uh, platelets or megakaryocytes. We can irradiate them and therefore uh, significantly decrease the all safety concerns that are associated with the use of iPS cells and genetically modified iPS cells. Um, and, uh, and then these megakaryocytes were also, were also shown the capability to produce platelets in vivo. So, I mean, for to treat thrombocytopenia, we try to uh, to short this process of uh, producing platelets. Um, Naomi, there's a task force that has been launched and it's called Cell Cycle Research Network. Mm -hmm. And how would you envision the production of these platelets? Is the goal in the clinical trial? And can you store these uh, platelets? I mean, yes, exactly, yes, um, yes, I mean, that is uh, uh, another uh, second part of this project that is also running, that is the cryopreservation of platelets and liophilization of platelets to produce the platelet laser. We can freeze them. Yes, yes, uh, yes, at minus 150. <laughs> advantage of using IPS cells that <coughs> you said you can freeze the IPS cells and exactly we can start differentiation whenever they need to so yes <coughs> any further questions <coughs> and the lentiviral vector that they have to have to be that's what they have to be that's what they have to be yes uh, so the lentiviral vector that we have different lentiviral vectors actually uh, this is uh, the one that we use for the animal models is one uh, is the PLVTHM that we got from uh, Trono Lab in Switzerland. We have another one that we get in got in cooperation 
with uh, Axel Schambach from the Hanover Medical School. This is a GMP compatible vector and integrates in a, um, a safe harbor and as a, uh, a suicide gene. I mean, this, uh, this typical vector that we use, this is the RNA ICA set. It has an H1 promoter that drives the expression of the SH RNA. And then we have normally an elongated factor one or the short version of the EF1 alpha to, to drive the expression in this case of GFP. But um, in the GMP, uh, we have uh, um, the suicide gene then here. Exactly, yes. Oh, we had done um, um, electron microscopy and uh, we have uh, also uh, measured uh, the production of uh, um, growth factors uh, yeah, to, to show that they were functional and that we could use for the different purpose that we have in mind. Uh, just silence saying that it's not affect at all um, the translation of the syndrome? No. Uh, here uh, we see absolutely no differentiation rates, uh, dif um, difference in the differentiation rates. Uh, we have other products that we see uh, sometimes actually an acceleration of differentiation, mm -hmm. uh, like the case of endothelial cells or of T cells. Mm -hmm. We don't know how, however, we don't see any tumorogenicity associated with yeah. this uh, uh, accelerated prolif uh, proliferation or differentiation rate. Um, actual differentiation, they do not proliferate more, they differentiate faster. Um, so differentiation is not the same. I mean, differentiation does not necessarily induce the tumor formation, but you don't see any no. um, acceleration in proliferation, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you so much.